The James Webb Space Telescope, the biggest and most complex telescope ever launched to space, and the next great observatory. It's so big that to even fit in the rocket that's going to launch it, it has to be folded up, and we'll be able to use it to study the first galaxies to ever form in the universe after the Big Bang, and to examine the atmospheres of potentially habitable exoplanets orbiting stars other than our own sun. The much delayed and extremely over budget telescope is finally ready to launch at the end of 2021. And the astronomy community is equal parts giddy with excitement and racked with nerves over the complexity of the mission. Named after James E. Webb, administrator of NASA, which is the highest ranking official in NASA for most of the 1960s, and who had an integral role in the Apollo space program. It will be a scientific and engineering marvel if this telescope actually works. Remember that bigger mirrors on your telescopes give you better images, but what do you do when you want to launch a mirror into space that's bigger than any of the rockets you have? Obviously, you fold up the entire telescope, mirror included, into a smaller shape, clamp it to the rocket, and once the whole thing is in space and detached from the rocket, you unfold the telescope in the most high stakes and expensive origami ever. I don't know if you've ever tried to fold a mirror up, but it's really hard. Unfolded, the primary JWST mirror has a diameter of 6.5 meters. By area, this is over six times bigger than the 2.4 meter mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope. Despite this huge increase in size, the JWST is actually 113 kilograms lighter than the Hubble mirror. It's made up of 18 hexagonal segments, which are gold-plated beryllium, and as you might expect, they're incredibly reflective. Webb also has a smaller secondary mirror here, so to take images, light travels through the universe to the telescope bounces off the large primary mirror where it gets focused to the smaller mirror here, and then it bounces down to one of the four infrared instruments on the telescope. There's actually a third mirror hidden somewhere behind here too, which helps the telescope get great images over a much larger portion of the sky and making it a so-called three mirror anastigmat telescope. The instruments on the telescope operate at incredibly cold temperatures, ideally less than 50 Kelvin, which means they'll actually be colder than the surface of Pluto to minimize the effects of thermal fluctuations on the sensors, which can lead to blurry images. The unfortunate thing about being in space is that the telescope will often be in direct sunlight with no atmosphere to protect it like we have on Earth. So it needs some good tricks to stay cold enough to operate. It starts with the largest sun shield ever flown in space made of a special material called Captain. It will absorb almost all of the sun's radiation leaving JWST as cold as the vacuum of space. It's the size of a tennis court and made of five layers, each layer thinner than the width of a human hair. And it also needs to be folded to fit in the rocket and then unfolded in space. Actually, this sunshield is one of the reasons for the delays of the telescope, because in one of the practice runs of unfolding the telescope, part of this shield ripped and subsequently had to be replaced. This shield will protect JWST from the heat coming from the sun, earth, and moon. And along with radiators and a liquid helium mechanical cooler, it will keep the instruments as cold as they need. The shield also blocks a lot of the light from the sun, earth, and moon, making it easier to see the faint objects that JWST is gonna be looking for. The reason that JWST's instruments need to be so cold is that they're infrared detectors. Infrared is a longer wavelength of light than the visible light that our eyes can see. And the general rule is that the longer the wavelength of light you're detecting, the colder the instruments need to be kept. The fact that JWST will see an infrared light makes it a bit different to its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, which sees mostly visible light and a little bit of ultraviolet light too. The popular comparison I've heard a lot of people who worked on Webb say is that JWST would be able to see the heat signature of a bumblebee, even if the bumblebee was one and a half million kilometers away from the telescope, which is Pretty crazy. <laughs> Infrared light can also travel through dusty regions of space much better than visible light can, since its longer wavelength means it's scattered and can be absorbed less often by the dust. This lets Webb peer into dusty regions of space that would be obscured to Hubble, and it will let us better understand things like the early formation stages of galaxies, stars, and planets, which are normally too dusty for us to see. You can see here an image taken with visible light, which is full of dusty regions, but the same object imaged with IR light suddenly becomes transparent and lights up with all the stars that were previously hidden by dust. As far as we know, almost every star in the universe has at least one planet orbiting it, and JWST will allow us to see the earliest parts of the formation of these solar systems all over the galaxy, something we've never been able to do before. JWST is also gonna be imaging the light from the very first galaxies that formed in the universe. When these galaxies formed just 300 million years after the Big Bang, they would have emitted a lot of UV and visible light. This light has been traveling through the expanding universe ever since, and as this space expands, it stretches the short wavelength UV and visible light 
into the longer wavelength infrared light that JWST will be sensitive to. This light is out of the range that telescopes like Hubble can see, which is exactly why Webb has been designed as an infrared observatory. So we fold up the $10 billion telescope and it will then be launched into space on an Ariane 5 rocket, which has a rocket fairing diameter of about five meters. Assuming the launch is successful and we don't blow up $10 billion worth of telescope on the launch pad, the next phase is when the most difficult and scary parts of the process happen. This is the delicate, intricate choreography of unfolding JWST and it begins just three days after launch, while the telescope is still flying towards its destination orbit. It kind of blows my mind that we'll be able to do the unfolding while it's still hurtling through space. Although I guess since there's no air resistance, I shouldn't be too shocked that this is happening, as long as it remembers to wait until it leaves the atmosphere before starting to unfold. This unfolding process will take around three weeks, and it starts with the sun shield blooming in space, followed by the mirror supports at around 10 days after launch, and days 12 and 13 involve unfolding the golden primary mirror. Note that not every segment of the mirror has to unfold separately, it's just in three sections that unfold to form the mirror. Almost a month after launch, JWST will reach its destination orbit. This is around a place called Lagrange Point 2, or L2, which is an interesting point in the Earth-Sun system, and it means that JWST will basically orbit with the Earth, but with a slightly larger orbital radius. For reference, L2 is about four times further away from the Earth than the Moon is so JWST will be about a million miles from the Earth. This means there's no way that astronauts will be able to get out to JWST to fix or change anything on the telescope if it goes wrong. This is unlike Hubble, which was serviceable, and that's because it was in a much closer low Earth orbit, just 547 kilometers above the Earth. The advantage of L2 over a different Lagrange point, there are five, is that the Sun, Moon, and Earth are always in the same direction, so the Sun Shield can easily block light from all of them at the same time and the opposite direction is really, really cold and dark, which are the perfect conditions for JWST's instrument. One of the scary things about the unfolding process is that there aren't any cameras on board to watch JWST unfold, meaning we won't actually know if it unfolds properly and successfully until we try and take a picture with it. If something does go wrong, there isn't a huge amount we can do from here to fix it. That said, there are some small thrusters on board, so if something gets stuck, they can rock it back and forth to see if that loosens it all up. They can basically shake it and see if that helps. It's also this orbit around L2 that provides the upper limit to the lifetime of the mission. While an L2 orbit is very convenient for Webb, it's not perfectly stable. So Webb will need to use its boosters to keep it in the orbit. This means that the amount of fuel on board is really the limiting factor on how long JWST can operate for. The goal is that after a six month commissioning phase where we confirm that everything is working, that JWST will take data for five years. Although in theory, it has enough fuel on board to stay in the orbit for 10 years. So that's really what we're hoping for. After that, JWST will slowly drift out of its nice orbit and will eventually be lost to the solar system. Once the telescope is unfolded and everything is in place, the hexagonal mirror segments are precisely aligned using little motors behind each piece to form one perfect mirror. Once everything is then cool enough, it's time to start observing the universe. So what is JWST's mission? What is it going to look for? Webb will be the first telescope to detect light from the most distant and hence oldest galaxies in the universe, which formed about 13 and a half billion years ago. It will help us understand the formation of these galaxies and will use its infrared instruments to also study the formation of stars and planets. It can see light of wavelengths between 0.6 microns and 28 microns, which is mostly infrared light and a tiny bit of the reddest visible light. And it will be able to see objects out a redshift of about 20 or 30 depending on how bright those objects actually are. At a redshift of 30, this means the universe was 31 times smaller than it is now, and meaning the objects that are around then are incredibly old. JWST also has new technologies on board that will allow it to image about 100 galaxies at one time, making it incredibly efficient and able to take a lot more data at once than previous missions. One thing to remember when you see images from JWST is that these are false color images. This is because the pictures will be taken in infrared light, which we can't see. So scientists have a bit of freedom to color these images however they want so that we can actually look at them. As well as direct imaging equipment, Webb also carries spectrometers, instruments that will let it peer into the atmosphere of exoplanets and tell us exactly what chemical elements these atmospheres contain. It's looking for chemicals that we know are signs of life, things only produced by living organisms. And the presence of these would probably be the biggest discovery of all time, as they could mean the discovery of life on other planets. This is one of Webb's scientific goals, to end our cosmic loneliness and give us a future not long from now where we can look up at the night sky, point to specific stars and say, there's life on a planet around that star. However, Webb can't image these exoplanets directly. So we won't be able to image these planets or anything on them. Despite this limitation, 
If it does see one of the biomarkers on other worlds, it will change our understanding of the universe and our place in it and could tell us that our solar system is not so special after all. This is a lot of awesome science that Webb is planning to do, and it's all about to kick off very soon. Assuming no more delays, the JWST will launch on December 22nd, 2021. Although after it was shipped to French Guiana, where it's launching from, they had to delay the launch a few days from December 18th. This was because of a, to quote, sudden unplanned release of a clamp band, which caused a vibration throughout the observatory. Basically, the ring that attached the telescope to the rocket suddenly popped off and it shook JWST. So they delayed the launch a few days just to check there was no damage, but it all looks good at the moment. So December 22nd is the big day and we're all counting on the Ariane 5 rocket and JWST to launch and unfold successfully. If you're watching this before the launch, let me know what the coolest part of web is in your opinion and what science you're excited for. If you're watching this after the launch, comment below web used liftoff if it all went well or comment web used explosion if it went not so well. Either way, Please subscribe if you enjoyed this and let's all hope that JWST can launch successfully. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.